Hi, everyone. Welcome to Office Hours. If you're watching on YouTube, you might see a little link down below. You can actually register and join us in Zoom for the real conversation. If you're here in Zoom and you're you're an attendee and you're looking at all these participants and as you as you listen, you may decide that some of us don't know what we're talking about and that you know better and it's quite possible that you do. And if you think you do, uh, we'd love to have you give it a shot. Come out and try and, and hang out with us. Uh, we have a kind of a constantly slowly rotating panel set of panelists of people who uh, can see a place where they can contribute to uh, to our conversation. So uh, if you feel like that, come in early. Uh, we open the doors at six. You don't have to come at six, but we start at six, and and uh, we just have kind of an open conversation. A lot of times we're fixing things or talking through things, and and uh, and having a lot of small talk. Uh, so um, so, but you're more than welcome to come at six. Uh, six between six thirty and six forty, we we distribute the Discord link. That's where a whole bunch of us keep talking about this between the shows. Uh, but it's by the time I do this announcement, it's already expired. So you have to come back tomorrow. Uh, between six forty and we're getting close to 6.42. Uh, we will uh, do the mic checks. Once we start the mic checks, the panel is closed. Um, and so uh, we wanna make sure that everybody has a high quality experience. So, um, so definitely be here by 6.40 if you wanna actually be on the panel and we'd love to have you. Uh, at seven o'clock, we'll start doing our um, Q&A, general Q&A. So usually what happens is the first hour is general Q&A and the second hour is something special. Uh, and so we talk about, to, you know, you can start putting your questions in. You can start put, putting your questions in at five o'clock in the morning if you want. So, um, so you can get, get ahead of it if you'd like. Uh, that's specific standard time. Uh, the, I will say the attendees have done a bang up job uh, this morning. And we already have, I think, about 12 questions lined up. So, uh, so that is exactly what we're hoping to do as we, uh, as we get into that. And so, um, so anyway, so that, that's a, it's a great uh, way to start. And that's what you should do. Uh, the attendees really are the producers. Uh, you are driving the show probably more than almost any show you'll ever see, uh, where your, you know, your questions and the voting of those questions, moving those questions up or down, is really what decides what we're going to talk about. So I'm um, definitely keep on driving those questions. Second hour, I have a, an unfortunate announcement today is that Peter Hillman will not be able to join us due to technical difficulties. He's going to, we're going to bring him back in a couple of weeks um, when he's back in his studio, but his, his light version of uh, what he had wasn't going to work. So, so we're going to bring him back um, in a, uh, I, I just want to make sure he's a great musician and we want to make sure that you get to hear him, you know, in a great way. So, so it, it, it didn't look like it was going to um, turn out that way for this one. So um, Peter, we're going to just let the questions extend into the, into the second hour today. Uh, but Peter Hamlin will not be able to join us today. Uh, tomorrow will be education as well as Saturday. Um, so, um, so we're looking forward to that. And that's usually a great conversation. We've got some guests starting soon uh, for the, um, uh, for the education hour. Uh, so we've got a couple people lined up that are pretty cool. So uh, stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, that's it. Uh, Chris, do we have any uh, questions? Uh, you know, you know, we do, because you just said we have a bunch lined up. Yeah, but that's a, but I, I, nice I, didn't, I didn't do that very well. That wasn't a very good, that, who, who, no, you're your going to fire that writer. Like who, <laughs> who, you know, how did they, how did they do that? All right. Segways, segways. Uh, okay. So first question, which you knew we had was six votes, by the way, I'm going to start, I'm going to start talking about how many votes so people get the idea that voting when is you vote it up you get you get to yep. the top of the show you may even get more time on it yeah. a. Mitchell number says, one with six votes a mitchell says uh victor will you be publishing your video session about using ecam it sounded great thanks that was uh, my stomach by the way i didn't record that video session so i will not be publishing it um so if you go to YouTube, there are tons of wonderful tutorials on how to use Ecamm Live much better than I can do. Uh, so go check it out. Go ahead, Chris. Are, are, are you saying that you can find tutorials on YouTube? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> I have found that to be true personally. Wow. This internet thing. I think it might be catching on. Um, All right, next question. <laughs> hey, Mitchell says, in the sync is the sync issue with the A10 Mini across all the models or just the Pro and the ISO? It doesn't even seem to be across the models. It seems to be, it's, it's working in some places and not others. Go ahead, Jason and then Beju. It's worth saying though, that there's, there's this thing that's going on where you have a strong positive correlation of first time producers 
and A10 Mini Pro users, and that Venn diagram has a whole bunch of overlap. As a rule, go through the camera. If you don't know what you're doing, go through the camera and then see well, if you still, still have sync problems. Issues. We're still seeing sync issues going through the camera. So, um, but, but because some folks are not seeing slippage and other people are, um, with the same hardware, I'm going to start, I, I'm starting to think that it's something to do with the USB-C connection or the computer's ability to manage that. Um, and, and I, and not, not so much power, but some, there's something in OS where, what we are seeing is Jeff Francis, who was here earlier is not seeing any slippage in Mojave and we are seeing it with Catalina. And so we're starting to kind of aim towards those issues right now, Beju and then, um, Mickey and then Victor. Yeah, one comment I will make that it might be issue between the Mini and the Pro because they have different USB controllers on it. The Mini just has a USB 2 controller, the Pro and the ISO have USB 3.1 controllers on it. So it could be an issue between them. I'm using the Mini and I think Jeff France is also using the Mini. I don't think he's using the Pro. So that could be a difference. Interesting. Okay, go ahead, Mickey. Yeah, um, so far, like in our setups, because we've been streaming VO sessions remotely to clients and then mm -hmm. showing a video feed. Um, we, we haven't had any slippage. All our machines in the studio are on uh, Mojave. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if this really if this um, has anything to do, do with it. But as Victor and I were, spoken, we were talking about earlier, all our ATEMs are plugged straight into the machines, not going through any. And are you using minis or pros? Um, we have two minis and then one pro. And you're not seeing slippage on any of them? Yeah, no no slippage at all, no issues. Mm. Go ahead, Victor, and then Chris, and while then Kyle. You were gone, while you were gone, I rebooted and plugged the ATEM directly into the machine. Uh, and so we'll see if that makes a difference. I bet and that yes. solved it. Oh, we'll oh, I didn't realize it was going through a... a, a... I thought it was going through, it's going through a it's Thunderbolt the, uh, dock. Oh, oh that doesn't count then. It's I the dock. Know. Every time... <laughs> Okay, Every well, time I've different. used any sort of a hub, I've, and I've bought a lot of them over the years, like, oh, this will be great. And then they're like, something goes wrong. And I pull it out of the stream. Everything's fine. I, I avoid them well, at all costs. Let's check it an hour. If that's it, that's a yep. wonderful thing. Uh, and, um, and I am going from to the camera, by the way, Jason. So yep. straight in. I, I, I applaud you're... you for your comment of us trying to uh, be different. It's just, if we don't know any better, we try everything. Yeah, and your, and your, uh, your audio is coming in a little low. Go ahead, Kyle. Uh, just as a test, I am also running ATEM Pro and Pile into a dock. And so as far as I know, I'm not slipping, but it's I, a little off, you, but it doesn't look like it's slipping. Your, so your audio is a little ahead, a couple frames. Check, check back in half an hour. We'll see what happens. Yep. Yep. Uh, Sky and then Jeffrey. Which, Real which, quick. Dock, which dock are you using? I'm using the J5, but I'm currently not running ATEM, but I, what docks are you using, please? Victor, what Docker are you using? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, it's just way out of the way right now. And yeah, I just fine. don't know about it. It's a dock. Yeah, go ahead, Jeffrey. Uh, yeah, we've we've talked about this several times. I mean, uh, it's just, uh, wow. I thought we would probably say that there's a dock in there. So <laughs> I don't know. It, it, Cause keep moving. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, definitely docs are, are not the uh, best thing to, to uh, use in video and audio. Uh, and I know it's very necessary okay. in some of these machines that uh, that have it. So, uh, but uh, let's. I'm hoping that that's going to be the answer. Uh, it is. It is trust. true that a lot of times we the little things in the chain can oftentimes make a big difference. You know, you know. So you, you know, every time, like even yesterday when I was having trouble with my install, I can't get for some reason I can't get my iMac to install the newest version of Catalina. First thing I do is unplug everything, like just pull everything out of the of the machine and try to, you know, you just want to look at it. anything that could be a, a, a variable, even if it doesn't look like it's part of it. Um, unconnected things oftentimes have an odd uh, connection. Go ahead. Uh, next question. Uh, Martin Reutemann says, can Alex mention again the stats app that he uses for Mac OS? I stats menu. Uh, go ahead, Phil. There's also this one, um, iStatistica Pro, if uh, people aren't familiar with it. it's a, I, I use iStat menus too, but I just started checking this one out. Very mm -hmm. cool. Uh, I just put the link in. my Cool. Okay. Yeah, I've been using, I don't know how long I've been, I've been using iStat's menu since probably it was made. You know, like it's, and put it on every machine across every, it's so easy to like, it, are all my processors, like if I go to compressor, are all my processors being fully utilized? I look up, yeah, they are. If I'm looking at what, how much bandwidth I'm using, I look up, 
there it is. I mean, you know, all those things are stuff that's right in front of me on my on my menu, and um, I, I have a hard time even thinking with about how my computer is running without that available. Anyway, next question. Uh, our own Paul Wallace says, "What are some great video making and editing apps on iOS and Android?" Now go ahead, Jason. There's exactly one I think that isn't just a one trick pony, and it's uh, iMovie. Well, I just on iOS. If we're talking about iOS, there's the um, Luma Fusion is is another one that's a pretty full featured uh, editing package that can go out to social and so on and so forth. People, I see a lot of advertisements for Adobe Rush. I don't. I've I've yet to meet anybody that actually uses it's terrible. it. Terrible. It's I, I absolutely opened it. terrible. I opened it and I was just. I tried to. I tried to get it to work and I was just like, oh, this is horrible and I don't want to use it anymore. And so I. I it, it didn't. I didn't get over the hump uh, with that. Uh, when I talk to folks that do a lot of mobile, um, if they're not, a lot of the folks that I've been talking to recently are mostly TikTokers and iMovie is the, you know, if they're not using the TikTok app itself, iMovie is probably the, the most popular one that they're using. Chris and then Jeffrey. Um, have you played with the Apple Clips app much? I played with it a little bit. I thought it was fun. I, it's I, very I, useful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, I played with it a little bit and thought it was fun, but I didn't, I didn't go very far with it. I find it really interesting because it, it does it does a lot of stuff apparently because it is on the phone and it has, you know, the phone has got a constant, you know, uh, path back to, um, you know, headquarters mm -hmm. to do all the speech recognition stuff. But I think it's an interest. It seems like it's almost like a test bed of things right. to come. Yeah, I, 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 I played with it and I think it was I can't remember what it was. There were some features that were that I needed that weren't there and I just went, well. We'll, we'll wait and see how that turns out. Uh, Jeffrey and then Jason and then Paul real quick. The, the best part about Rush is that you, once again, on a plane, you can do a, a little bit of video mm -hmm. editing and then it, you can then transfer it over to your main computer yep. to finish out for Premiere Pro or, or yep. Rush there. Jason? Uh, yeah, one more. Filmic Pro is not garbage, but the rest of them, again, they do, you know. Does Filmic Pro do bonus. editing? I don't know about editing. I just captured. No, it just yeah. does high just high quality camera. camera control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, great, it's great one trick pony. Then that's a must. Yes, must have, it is. Must have app. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next question. Oh also, wait, wait. Also double tap. Oh, real wait, quick, Paul. Real quick, Paul. You, okay, okay, go ahead. Chris, how many votes did I have? Oh, I. It's already gone. You're now. You're, you're now pink. Okay, go ahead. You're Don't. Yeah, pink. and that's. So like that's an inside inside question. Like st we gotta stay on focus. <laughs> stay just, on. Like Jeff, stay. I was, like, gonna, I was gonna say filmic pro and look what ha okay, just happened okay. to me. Yep. There you just go. to make sure I understand, right. most of our sync issues, audio and video, come from routing audio through the camera with the HDMI output. This no, is it, it, it's that most of the sync issues can be resolved by doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Bill. Well, then Zach I can... think this came up originally because everybody who was getting new ATEM minis understood that, that if you plug in your audio and your video into an ATEM mini, there were sync issues coming up. And the quickest way to get rid of them was to take the feed directly from the camera into your laptop. And that's, and and that's not, and that doesn't work. We've already tested yeah. that. So, right, so but that we, was where we, it came up. We're, we're, yeah, we're starting to wind our way into the fact that it is, we think that it's the USB-C connection to the, com the computer and it may be connected to what operating system you're using. So um, we're, we're slowly working the variables out um, because of everybody here doing testing. So it, it does right now appear like it could be the USB driver and Catalina is kind of our, our leading contenders at the moment, but we, we don't know for sure. Um, go ahead, Chris, next question. Um, most of the computers also, the, the USB ports act and behave slightly differently depending on like what side of the computer or like on the iMac Pro, there's two different buses that might have something to do with it. Yeah. Uh, John Preto says, Phil says he has a, a pile mic into a mix pre. What adapter is he using? No adapter, just the mini jack right into the mix pre um, aux input and really? a noise assist. Yep. That's cool. Yep. I didn't, noise I didn't assist think that and, was uh, possible. Into the ox. That's, that's lit. Yep. That's cool. You're uh, a gangster. Okay. All right. Uh, a Mitchell says, uh, Phil Linger, what was the application you were showing on your laptop to evaluate sweep? in your camera demo yesterday. It's just a YouTube video. I put the link in Mukana. Great. Um, Efficient. Next question. Love that. Another John yeah. Preto question. Alex, has anyone on the panel used the Sienna app for Apple TV to bring NDI into the Apple TV, then HDMI out 
to say maybe an A10 mini. Sienna. I haven't I haven't used it. I mean, <clears throat> for me to get, um, I mean, so far what I've done is I've I've just pushed from my phone to the Apple TV, and then the Apple TV does HDMI into the into the switcher. So I haven't needed to. I don't. I haven't needed the Sienna app to do that, but I can see how that would, if you wanted to send NDI to a Apple TV to get it into a switcher, I can see how that could be useful. I just haven't, yeah, you know, haven't tried it. I can you imagine myself having like four, four Apple TVs that are feeding, that are feeding, that, that might be the easiest way to get NDI into a ATEM switcher. I'm, now I, I have to test it now. So we'll- Probably no delay whatsoever. <laughs> oh man, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so right. question about that. When you do the AirPlay, what does the Apple TV do with the crazy wide aspect ratio of the iPhones? Um, you get it depends a, on the app. Yeah, what is it every 19. app does it slightly point different. Five to nine or something. No, it's it. It depends on it. Uh, it depends on what it what it does. Usually, if we're doing it when we're doing the mirroring, we're doing it because we're trying to show the screen. So it having pillars pillars doesn't bother us because usually it's pillars. You know, because we're um, we're usually most of the time I use it. I use it with iPads. And those iPads give me a pillar box on the way yep. out. Yep. Um, and I'm doing it so that I can show you how I use an app, you know, gotcha. so it's, that's, that's usually the, the use case. And so I haven't tested it in a lot of other places. And so and I don't know how it does it. the phone. I know that with TikTok, it's just right in the middle of the, the <laughs> we, we, we watch TikTok on the screen, on the big screen. Uh, that's how we do it. All right. Next question. All right, Paul, once again, I have NDI working perfectly on iOS. This NDI thing keeps coming up in your, in your life, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And had perfectly on iOS and Android, but am looking for a way to remotely zoom, focus, et cetera. Any suggestions for solutions besides Team Viewer? And I say perfectly, just as my thing <laughs> turns into psychedelic. And, and are you using ATI or NDI there? <laughs> yes, I am using NDI. Okay. It's right. working perfectly, like yeah, I said. I can so see that. It's a different definition focus, of the word perfectly. Yeah, you're, you keep about you, focus you, at the moment. You keep using that word. <laughs> I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> yeah, but the focus is great. <laughs> so perfect. It's so perfect, Alex. Yeah, yeah. All right. A. Mitchell right. says, can we have a special show time reserved for visually checking and troubleshooting audio sync issues live? Doesn't have to be a full second hour, but might be good to allow temporary to allow temporarily allowing panel access to volunteers. I, I mean, that would know. typically happen in the the hour before the event. Before, you know, the six o'clock time is the time to come for that. That's that's when we're just fiddling. Uh, we do a lot of sync tests and other tests, and and people jump in to test something, and and it's wide open. So I think we wouldn't do it during this time, but we would um, definitely be open to doing it. Uh, in that six to six thirty time is where it's kind of wide open. If someone wants to come in and test something, we've we've spent the whole half an hour working with someone's camera or their audio or whatever. When if you have an issue, that's the best time to come because there's no there's no agenda there. We're just kind of like it was kind of fun when up. Horst became your your little yeah, horse became, for a couple. There, of days. there was a, for, for for a while. Horst became my my thing of getting the getting the LUTs right and getting the key right and getting the you know all those little bits and pieces. And now he's not here. I don't know what happened. Horst, I can't here. believe no one has made the Horst was your whipping boy joke. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> all right, all right. Next question. I'll also say that Discord is a great place to find somebody to like help you resolve a problem. Yeah. Uh, there's a it, lot of one. Isn't it, Mike? Point. There's a lot of yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, just people picking point up point, and, and one point on to one. point and just one-on-one -on -one and figuring stuff out. So it's it's a great, great resource for that. Go ahead. Now coming to you from the A. Mitchell's chat tool, aside from the Panasonic TriCaster Hybrid, what integrated hardware style switchers use NDI, not including ones like the TriCaster or the Disguise D3, is that how you say that? Uh, which are full computer boxes with expanded hardware cards and external controls, but true modular format switchers like the old Grass Valley are okay. Jason? The answer is none of them that you've heard of and ask me why. Why, why? Jason? Because NDI Cause... requires a computer. <laughs> yep, that's right. Yeah, all right, Good next point. question. Uh, Peter Collins from Vail, Arizona says, what tricks and techniques are hurricane reporters like the Weather Channel using to get good or at least entertaining audio while standing in rain and high wind? Is all the audio sourced through the reporter's mic or are storm sounds being mixed in from elsewhere? Go ahead, Jason. 
Oh, are you kidding? That's all Foley. No, um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, that it's just funny. um, no, it's it's my guess is that they just have a a massive blimp on a, a shotgun that's protected. Yeah, I, I think they're picking up whatever's there. It, it, the, those those kind of pickups they own they have usually the camera operator and the and now a lot of times it's just the reporter with an iPhone. But Bill. And there's a guy with a large sheet of tin to do thunder. I'm joking. Uh, you would see most often weather guys in hurricanes using an Electra Voice RE50, which is a mic that is particularly good uh, in terms of natural uh, keep away from the wind noise and stuff like that. And then they would eat it and then they would turn their back to the direction that the wind is coming from. You'll see them facing inland because the storm is usually coming from the water. Yeah, Mickey. Yeah, what um what Bill said, like an an RE50 or um a very popular mic for reporters would be the Sennheiser MD46, and those are very like um those two mics are very resilient. Like the MD46, like a sure SM58, you could use it as a hammer if you want to. Um, <laughs> And um, why, why is anyone taking a picture of like, like like a toolbox where you just have you know and a little picture that says that says like you know screwdriver and a picture of an SM58 hammer, you know? Like, yeah, you and to, uh, on, on top of that, the in, with the XLR connectors, oftentimes we put med or like wind some medical tape on it or electrical tape or both um, medical tape because it's waterproof a lot of times, um, and then of course we'll have like decent wind protection on the actual capsule. But if it's really like horrible, we put a uh, non-lubricated condom on the capsule and cover that up with a, with a foam. And that, that, um, that solves a lot of issues with water getting into the capsule. Right, that's great. Next question. Gabriel from Malaysia says, I've got a, I've got a dummy HDMI to simulate dual screen monitor on the Mac. Zoom sends, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Zoom sends one window to the second monitor and I can't drag it back. What's the tip that was shared a while ago to bring all windows to the main window to the main monitor again? Mickey Thanks. and then Bill. Uh, in system preferences in the display panel, um, you have a button there that's uh, labeled gather windows, I believe. And that should bring all the windows that are open into that monitor, into that screen that you click gather windows on. Um, go ahead, Jason. Yeah, um, as a as a plus one to that, you can actually designate specifically if you want one app to always launch on one desktop. If you right click, you've got that option, and it will always go to the same place. Oh, that's great. Um, next what? question. Yeah, that's cool. I learn stuff every day. Stuart Fairweather from Mel Melbourne, Australia says, uh, suggestion for non musical second hour guest who can speak to how broadcast and the web are converging and are able to get viewers to watch long form videos. Destin Sandin from Smarter Every Day and Tim Dodds from Everyday Astronaut. We will, uh, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. Put that in someplace in Discord so it doesn't yep, get- Yeah, put it, put it, put it in the second hour suggestions. Yep, next question. Michael Weber says, does anyone have experience with Pixelot camera, sy camera systems for sports coverage? Build as fully automated production. Pix, uh, there's, there's a link. Uh, looks looks to be a 180 degree camera with software that zooms in on the 4K image to follow the action. Curious how well it works in the real world. Michael Weber. My my uh, my experience of these fully automated ones is they're really good for high school games and tier three uh, college. <laughs> you know, like it's not like they're not real solutions. Um, it might work with it might work with basketball because of the you know because you have a lot of wide shots, but it won't work for I, I, the idea of it being. Um, Go back and to the sample footage. There's there's basketball. I mean, yeah, I can see how it could follow shot. follow the basketball wide shot. I don't know if it would. I don't think um, you could use it for the hero cam. Yeah, and my um, just so you guys know, I don't know if you can see me talking. My uh, your picture froze. Yeah, for me, all of you froze. So oh, I may no, even I'm, come back in. No, I you see people see everybody working. Everybody else moving. No, everybody else moving. For some reason, my computer, uh, when it went into speaker, when it went into spotlight, I went to grid and then it, it froze. So I'll be, I'll be right back. Um, hold your uh, hold. You're not, yeah. Yeah, okay. zoom, zoom so in. I'll keep, you're up. 
locked how up. Does it, how right. does that pixel art, does it, does it, is it um, image recognition or is there some sort of sensor that it follows? Who knows? Maybe it's a terribly unfortunate to... name because I can only hear in my mind Camelot as Camel pixel yeah. art. <laughs> yep. Maybe you glue a sensor to the outside of the basketball. To the, to the ball, yeah. That seems logical. Uh, let's go well, to the next I can only question. hear spam a lot. Let's go to the next I'm question. I'm hearing Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> Jonas Dugtel from Reutingen, Reutingen. What are the requirements to join the panel? Okay, I will explain it, Jonas. Uh, well, Alex wait, no, talks I, I, I'm here. Oh, there's two of me now. Wow, there's two of you. One that's, that's, cool. I, 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 one that's still frozen. Will the real Alex please stand up? This is, I'm real. Um, one of the, you uh, needs a goatee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, there we go. I disappeared. Uh, no, I, I want to make sure that we're clear that that to get into the panel, you have to have at least a master's degree. Um, and <laughs> along, we want to see, you're going to have to submit your CV in triplicate uh, three weeks before so that it can go through it. And we're going to put you through uh, some some vetting. You'll be interviewed four or five times. COVID uh, test. To make sure. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a COVID test, of course. Um, Even though and, you never um, leave your house. Yeah, and uh, and then we're but we have to interview all your family and and your friends and even people that don't like you. Uh, in fact, you have to submit those so that we we know. And so so those are the things that are required. <laughs> Down payment. I, I just have a uh, I you just have, have a bachelor's. Do I have to get enter grad yeah. school now? No, no, no. You're not supposed to tell them that. You're, you're supposed to, we we have, to have all the new people. No, no, no. It's okay. You can that. just take go to night school. No problem. Garden no, the, requirements, the requirements the requirements for. The requirements for, for, for getting here is uh, you, uh, you just have to get here early. <laughs> like, pretty, you just have to be here and be easy. willing to be. So, uh, so what you're saying is night school is out. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Getting so early. It, you, it'd be this. here by 640. 640 is the cut. Um, and so, uh, so you, you, we recommend getting here early and testing things. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Kyle. They used to say uh, the requirements to be on the panel at the moth where you just showed up. So. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So, so the um, uh, so anyway, so that's the that's the requirement. I mean, obviously, we're you know we we prefer you to have good audio and good video. We won't probably we'll probably suggest that you step back if you don't have good audio, good video, or good internet within reason. We're not expecting it to be perfect, but we expect it to be at a pretty high level. Go ahead, Jeffrey. That is Pacific time, by the way. Pacific. Yep, absolutely. All right, next question. It is awkward kicking people out. Uh, Bobby Spangler says, uh, Alex, do you still do your teardowns where you pick apart the technical aspects of a video? It could be an interesting second hour. It would be kind of fun for us to do them together. Yeah, let me think about that. that that'd be fun. I, my switcher had been used for a bunch of stuff or the switcher I was using it was, and, and now it's back. I just haven't gotten it wired up because I- I figured my... it was back. Oh, it's not wired up. How did you go to black earlier? Yeah, I, I, it was something that I, I, I was speaking yesterday to a small group of people about uh, Zoom for musicians or, or, or streaming for musicians. And, um, and I, I wanted to show, I wanted to have a whiteboard, which I ended up not using, but figuring it out turned out to be really useful, which was that I took my iPad and I plugged it. I'll show you. I think I can do this relatively quickly. Um, I plugged my iPad into my web presenter. So I don't have the switcher in place yet, but I have the web presenter and I realized, oh, right. The web presenter has two inputs. It has the HDMI and the, and the SDI input. Mm -hmm. And so, so I just plugged my iPad in and then I'm, I created like 30 sheets. So I'll show you, uh, let's see if this works or it will, it'll either work. There you go. So you see it there. And so you can see this here. <laughs> There's just a whole bunch of white sheets because you can't really undo. I mean, you can't undo quickly. So once I hit play, I get a full screen. So then I can, I can, uh, I can draw, right. And then I just sweep and it just disappears. And so then I can, you know, draw something else and then sweep and then draw something else and then sweep. So I could, the idea was I could talk about things and say, this is going to go into this. And so you, you know, just go into the next slide. The yeah. Next white slide. Paper. I just, I just made 20, 20. So I you made a pad white. of paper is what you did. I did. I did. I made a pad of paper. It, it's like the, it's like the, um, and it just switches back and forth. And so I made a pad, of, it, it's just a digital pad of paper that you just keep on rolling over. It's like if you had an easel and you're throwing that piece of paper over it, you now have something there. Now it doesn't save any of them. So you have to remember that like when you, um, you know, when you go back, in fact, I, I probably could if I do this. Bad. Oh no, it, does. It's, it saves them. I can go back to it while I'm in the presentation, but it doesn't remember them when I stop. You know, so it's, it's just the way the markup works. You know, it's way- It's too bad. Yeah, it, I, there's going to be, you know, I'm going to fill out a request. 
be great for you to save those so, drawings. But but then how did you go to black then? You just changed to oh, a, a I didn't blank have an input. input. I was like, I wonder what will happen if I, I, I have to admit that when I did it this morning, I was like, I wonder what will happen if I just hit an input with no input and it just goes to black. So, so then I was able to, with the web presenter, just it's, it's, a so you said it's HDMI and SDI. How would, does your Mac come in via SDI then? No, uh, that's, that's an iPad. And then there's a camera, the camera's coming in over SDI. Gotcha. The, the yep. iPad is coming in over yeah, yeah. HDMI. Gotcha. And then you have a little one and two on the web presenter. I just hit two and, you know, now, now I took it out. So now it's black. Right? Okay. So super useful. Moving forward. Yep, next question. Uh, Steve says, uh, Mahaz, uh, thanks for the pronunciation, Steve. The 13-inch MacBook Pros use integrated graphics versus discrete graphics found in the 16-inch. Would buying a 13-inch be a mistake for a K-12 teachers doing remote teaching and content creation? Well, I think that, um, I, I don't, I think that would be amazing for teachers to be able to do, to have a MacBook Pro to, to do that. I think that any of those would be better than most of the other options. I'd be tempted to get the 13 inch with four ports rather than two ports. Um, That's an option. There's a, That's yeah, there's, an option. Yeah. The, the, um, the one that I'm streaming the, the audio to right now has got, is a 13 inch with four ports, um, you know, four USB C's it's new in the last update. And so. And it may even have, for some reason, I thought that it had a discrete graphics on it, but it may not. It was just my little. No, look. I've never seen one with discrete graphics. Now yeah. I have to look. But I will you know, check it, right now. For most teachers, it would be plenty. Like, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to do most of what you needed with that with that 13 inch. I don't see. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, if you could afford to get a 16 inch with an, with a discrete graphics, it'll be better for some of the higher end stuff. But I think you'd be fine. Go ahead, Beju. Yeah, my wife's a teacher, so she has an uh, 13 inch with the four ports with an i5. Uh, it has an Intel Iris graphics rather than just the standard Intel graphics, so that's a little better. Right. It works really well. So she has a second display plugged in. She's doing video production on it, and it works really nicely. Yeah, and it's a good balance of power and affordability, basically, on that machine. Yeah, it's it's a great great little machine. So I would I would uh, I would definitely recommend that. Yeah, I'm, ahead, I'm I'm looking at the website and the hot the the right hand column, which I like to buy. It actually in the list of features, right there, clears the day. Four Thunderbolt three ports. Yep. Very it's cool. Good. But it, you 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 run out of Thunderbolt really quickly. So I mean, and, you know, the it's worth seeing getting that hubs are a problem. Yeah, yeah, hubs are not your friend, and you'll run out of them quickly. So I would I would highly recommend um, getting one. Go ahead, Mickey. Yeah, just on the topic of hubs, like I I put my non like a uh, bandwidth uh, heavy. Uh, peripherals on on hubs like say my mouse my keyboard right um sometimes like yeah my ethernet adapter like none like heavy but anything that's feeding audio and video into the machine those i ensure that it's plugged directly in uh, uh, jeffrey and then colin uh it says for thunderbolt hubs or thunderbolt uh uh, plugs, but is it one Thunderbolt bus or two Thunderbolt buses? I'm assuming it's going to be one, and that just means that they're all all four are plugged into one bus. All right, go ahead, Jason. I'm sorry. No, it's Colin. totally sorry, two. Yeah, two. Yeah, two. Uh, and, uh, and to Mickey's point, uh, it's not always intuitive uh, as to which devices are higher bandwidth. I had a client uh, I was working with uh, where we were trying to fit. Uh, a whole bunch of USB webcams and some other things uh, onto his system. He had a uh, some built-in ports and a, and a hub. And shockingly, putting all the cameras on built-in ports and all the human interface devices, keyboard and mouse and that sort of thing on the hub killed the system, whereas doing it the other way around did not. Got it. So um, yeah, you have to balance these things out carefully. And if, they, if some things don't show up, fiddle around with the arrangement across the, the multiple buses that you have available it's mm -hmm. it's not as trivial as it should be victor so. on the 2020 macbook pro 13 with the four ports it is uh integrated graphics iris plus graphics yeah. Yeah. all right next question all righty uh gabriel Ong from malaysia says in live production max and pcs have their own advantages in different parts of a signal chain do you run mixed platform setups and how do you integrate between the two platforms? Go ahead, Jason. 
Uh, the answer is I try to avoid it at all costs. I use emulation when I absolutely need something that's Windows because Windows has taught me that it's not reliable in production. I don't hate it, but it it, it has taught me. Yeah, I, I we're we're using a pretty integrated hub. In fact, the the larger one, the version that we have right now, is probably more PC than um, uh, than Mac. Um, we have I think ten. Dells that are feeding Zoom. Um, and a lot of that was we wanted maximum flexibility for being able to go to vMix um, and or Zoom or you know other things all at the same time. Um, and so the only thing we're using in that case for on a Mac side is actually the controllers for the switcher and uh, mixers and stuff like that. And so there's not not as much there. Um, so you know I think that we get a little bit more flexibility there with some of the software um, uh, of what we're what we're using, but but that's the uh, that's the reason we're using PCs on that side. I don't, yeah, Macs are, I will admit that they can be, uh, if you're not getting a Mac Pro, I mean, I need to put cards in them. You know, so the one of the big things with the PC was that I need, I don't want external, I don't want an external card. Uh, I don't, you know, some kind of card holder. I want it in the computer. And um, because of that, I have to get a Mac Pro if I want to put it inside. And so when you're talking about deck link cards and everything else, we usually start leaning towards PCs. Go ahead, Mickey. Yeah, for, I mean, just thinking price per dollar, like it makes total sense to go with a PC. And yeah, a lot of the production set I'm on, it's like a mixed ecosystem of um, Windows machines and Mac machines. How do we integrate between the two pl platforms? Um, standards, right? Well, there are a lot of standards, but the, the good thing is like, that's how you can have them communicate. Like for audio, mm -hmm. Dante works on Mac and PC. AES, there's hardware that works on Mac, Mac and PC on the video and baseband always works. So there are like standards that will allow you to interconnect these different systems. And then, and then for post, I only use Mac. <laughs> like, like I, I won't, I, you know, I just, unless I'm, unless I'm doing some crazy heavy lifting 3d stuff, I'll only use a Mac for that. Cause I just, I value my time. Um, anyway, next, next question. Uh, next question. Uh, Hasma, Hey, Hasma says, my brain switches off when SDI or NDI are mentioned on office hours. Maybe I have not had the need for it yet, but in which situations or, or production world uh, or production, would you need to use the one or the other? Keep in mind, my productions are at mom and pop or entry level right now. Go ahead, uh, Jason. That's a really multi-part question, so I'll, I'll answer the, the very first part of it and, and you know, let, let other people chime in. Um, the two could not be more different. One is a SMPTE standard. SDI is coaxial cable. Um, NDI is completely different, much newer, and um, it's it, apples and oranges despite the similarity in the initialism. Uh, Colin and then Victor. Well, I would, for, for a mom and pop shop, I would use NDI when you can't find a long enough cable, but, uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a networking, it, it's, it's a video networking standard ish stand almost standard. Um, I think uh, almost standard is the key, key phrase. Yeah. There. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's supported by new tech and, you know, new tech is what is it? VizRT is the outfit that owns new tech now. So yeah. it's a big enough business that uh, they can push this it into a standards track but uh, it, it's out there it's usable uh, people have had some problems with audio across it particularly with uh, and color <laughs> uh, no only one person has had problems with no color. that's that's not that's not that's not why we've, we've seen it three or four times but, now oh, okay but so, many, yeah, but many people have had problems with endemic. audio in terms of sample rate uh, right. incompatibility and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's imperfect, but if you don't have a long enough cable and, yep. and you do have a network connection of some other kind, uh, it works quite nicely. Uh, Victor? A use case that I'm thinking of is that if I want to do a logic demonstration, I can run logic on my Mac, on my iMac Pro over here, but while I'm on the, on the uh, Zoom call or whatever, I can do the display without taxing the computer that I'm using to stream by bringing in through NDI, the screen scrape and Jeffrey. potentially the audio. At least that's Jeffrey. what I'm thinking right now. Yep, Jeffrey. 
Uh, for me, NDI, I do use it. I use it kind of sparsely, even though my, my PTZ camera, which is actually over there, my PTZ camera has been running NDI. It's a cabled NDI rather than a wireless NDI. Uh, the biggest thing for SDI and even NDI that would uh, be a preference over HDMI is if you decide that you have to have your cameras way far away, like maybe uh, in another room or something like that, then you can run better cable runs, the HDMI cables, they're, they're just really not meant for running through floors and, and, and choices and stuff like that. Okay. Next question. Uh, right, Jeffrey, Chris. when you when you say wired NDI, do you mean like on an ethernet cable? Wired? Absolutely. Ethernet? I have on my PT, I have a PTZ optics. And I run Cat7 cables straight to the one gig yeah, switcher, yeah. and then that goes to the computer. I gotta say, being the old guy in the room, the most amazing cable technology I've ever come across is Triax. You can run camera control, picture back, AC power out to the mm -hmm. camera. Right. Tri Triax was amazing. And anyway, I, 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 I have to apologize. I, I got to apologize. I have a, a, a production emergency on my end. So I'm going to have to drop out a little early. So I apologize to everybody. Um, we have, I just got a bunch of texts that something's ca catching fire. So um, not real fire, but, but I, I need to, I need to go work on it. Grab so your um, extinguisher. And all right. Yeah. I'm going to go grab it. All right. Thanks everybody. Take care. All right. Uh, yeah, next Chris, question. Uh, Chris Triax was a great film and, and look, look at what's happening yeah. to me. You need to stop using what's going that. on. Just, just, <laughs> Just say no. Uh, Gabriel once again says, I have an ATEM Mini and an ATEM Production 4K. Is it possible to control both ATEMs from one computer? They're both on the same network. Does anybody know the answer to that? Jason. Uh, the, yeah, I'm going to give you the best kept, not really a secret that Blackmagic says. Anytime you have the ATEM control, you duplicate it. So you actually duplicate the application in your applications folder and you can simultaneously run two versions of ATEM control. I know what you're actually after though, which is I've got two different things and I want them to work in tandem. Companion Pi will do that. Companion Pi? Companion it's, it's, IO, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would love to, I, I, I gotta say I downloaded the, what is, is it Companion? Is that what it's called that everybody talks about? Right. <clears throat> Bit so focus far, companion, yes. So far over my head. A Mitchells says, "Was the cancellation today just due to the music quality, or Peter uh, for Peter's chat on music tech and online production, or you know we don't know." Uh, Alex knows the answer. Alex is not here. Uh, Mary Pasetta, uh, Marty Pasetta. Hey, Marty says. Um, <clears throat> Is there a, I was going to say a touch of the COVID. Is, is there a good desktop mini shotgun? Is there a good desktop mini shotgun to put on the shock desk mount. with, with a shock mount that anyone can recommend would be for online meetings. Ones we use in live TV are way, way too expensive budget around five or 700 ish for the mic. Don't want to see the mic in frame. Thanks for any suggestions. I don't think you need to even spend that much money. We don't. Uh, Phil, then no. Jeffrey. Yeah, I would then... recommend the Rode NTX. It's got a built-in shock mount. It's about two hundred some odd bucks. It's good, good small Jeffrey? form factor. There are so many smaller brands. Uh, Comica comes to mind. Uh, Sierra Monica has one. Uh, several different. Just look on Amazon. You'll see a whole bunch of shotgun options. Movo, another one. Jason. Um, all those suggestions are great. I would be remiss if I don't mention if you're not wearing headphones and using a shotgun and you've got, you know, your TV speakers on yeah. bad time. All right. Uh, Sky and then Bill. The little Sennheiser that I use on top of my DSLR is it reaches out pretty good and it's about a hundred and some bucks. Bill then Mickey. Yeah, the thing about going up in price on microphones particularly, the human voice is not hugely challenging to record well. Uh, it's not like a violin where you've got all overtones and, or something that has monstrous bass that needs the large diaphragm uh -huh. to resolve. So most shotguns, even inexpensive ones, will do just fine. So don't obsess about this. When we spend a lot of money on these things, we're looking for that nuance. We're looking for a different quality um, so like the MKH-416, which is used a lot in voiceover, has a particularly rich low-end for voiceover. But if you're not doing that and you're not doing commercial radio spots, 
you don't really need that. So buy what you need, which is simple stuff, less expensive. Mickey? Yeah, uh, I, a good a good op- <clears throat> option is the, the Deity D3 and or D3 Pro. So check those out. Uh, and Paul, which one of your 37 microphones would you recommend? <laughs> I would recommend uh, either Audio-Technica or Sure. They're both around mid $200 range. And I don't have that many. Well, I'm really- going gonna, gonna to plus one on Phil and plus one on Jeffrey and plus one on Zach and plus one on Mickey and plus one on Bill. And let's see, I just wanted to hear myself talk. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, James Babbitt from San Diego says, Oh, actually, what I will say is you may not need an actual shotgun. If you're trying to just get a microphone that's out of frame, you know, my mic is on a boom that kind of reaches over from the side and it's out of frame. I don't have to wear it. I don't have to feel tied down for that. Anyway, uh, James Babbitt says, how do you reduce wind noise when using a headset mic like the Countryman E6 outdoors? The foam windscreen does not reduce wind noise very well. Mickey, do you ever use those outdoors? Mickey? Uh, yeah, specifically the, the E6. Um, I haven't used that, but it's essentially the same thing as the H6, except for a single ear. Um, like I, I don't really have to use them outdoors, but if I, if I needed to add more wind protection, I'd probably look at um, solutions from Rycote. They have little like uh, wind jammers for, for yeah, small little microphones. Foamies, little um, fuzzies. Yeah, the little, little furry, uh, what do you call this? Um, they call it overcovers. So I would look around around there, look at Rycote for solutions. Jason? Um, I would say, so it's not a dead cat, especially not when it's that size. It's more like a dead micro mouse. But, you, you know, essentially what you want is just the tiniest little uh, furry thing. But my guess is that the wind you're actually hearing is because your gain is wrong and the wind is actually your breath. So I would also really mess around a lot with where where it is. I think the best thing I've learned here is the idea of the plane of the mouth. Like your microphone should not be past the plane of your mouth. Uh, Bill, did you have anything to add? No, I was just going to say mounting mics is its own kind of sub specialty in this. It it really is more in use with lavaliers than it is with headset mics because they're fixed. But signal to noise ratio is going to be how far the mic is from your actual um, sound source. And so, you just have to know your mics and, and learn the accessories that you can use with them. There are foam balls and a whole bunch of other stuff. You often see those huge foam balls on certain mics, which they're trying to knock down wind noise. Okay. Uh, our own Victor from Brookings, South Dakota, where there's not a lot of people. Uh, Victor says, Alex, can you talk about your preferences for, all di- for an all digital audio chain? That's... I'd be happy to. I'll be filling in for Alex. No, he's gone. He can't answer the question. So but I want to check my sink. <laughs> I, I, you know, I got to say, I had never heard of Dante until office hours. You know, I just sit in my room and cut video together. And when I started hearing what Alex was talking about, about even using Dante for comms, I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Like, wouldn't you rather listen to something that sounds good. And this is totally unrelated. And I almost just skipped this thing. Uh, I bought a pair of these. These are the Apple Air Bud Pros, the Bud Jordans or whatever they're called. Uh, and these are amazing. Like I, when I put the, the noise canceling on, I don't, I don't wanna talk to anybody. I never hear my, a- I put them on in the AC just, and my AC is wicked loud. And I was like, good night. I just want to live inside those things. How do, yeah, they, couple co- of- how do they compare to the bows? I have no idea. I've, well, so, I've never so tried the, anything else. Yeah, yeah. So you look so you know, dorky never, though. Totally. You look like a diff- Well, a couple of things. The, the, the bows are really, really good, but they're, you know, they're bows EQ'd. Uh, but also they, the one thing that I would suggest on the, if you're going to buy the AirPods Pros, go to Amazon and get some different silicon tips. Yeah, they stay in your ear better. There's a little yep. more friction, and uh, and they stay in your ear better. And they I had, jam up. I had no problem with them falling out until I was eating Chick Fil A yesterday. It's when like, you eat, boom, boom, it's like, uh, just a little bit, they'll fall out. The other thing I've done on these is uh, I got another pair here. 
and I've uh, taken uh, uh, nude nail polish and painted them flesh colored. So Nerd. they're not like blatantly white when I stick them in my <laughs> ear. It, you really can't tell I'm wearing them. It just looks like maybe he's got a little ear knob jewel on there. Uh, but they're Jeffrey? really good quality. Jeffrey? Well, getting back to the question at hand, uh, the big thing you got to remember is that if you're recording through a microphone, it's never going to be all digital. Uh, if you're going from computer to computer, it's going to be all it's going to be all digital. My recommendation, if you're doing an all digital uh, uh, setup, that that's the dedicated machine that's going to have everything that you want on there. Take all the junk off of there, and 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 if, if you can air gap it, air gap it so it doesn't even access the internet, and uh, and then just use it for dedicated audio and go from there. But if you're on the Windows side, you can use Voice Meter Banana. That's a really nice a lot uh, mixer and i know a lot of a lot of the windows guys use that it works really well is that the same people that make the potato yes it's that's weird uh jason um okay i will do my best to give a concise alex answer uh at, digital is great what makes it better is it's insanely repeatable it's insanely copyable and pasteable and it's insanely consistent that's what it does best and yet we're all reseeding our USB ports all the time. Uh, Vi so Victor, what was the spirit of the question that you asked? Yeah, I thought maybe I better address that in, in all seriousness. Um, <laughs> because I was about to go down the, the AirBuds Pro discussion for like the yeah, next half hour. Yeah, you were going to get the digital AirBuds Pro. No, specifically, Alex has mentioned several times that he likes using Yamaha digital mixers. Uh, my assumption for his preference of that is of course the Dante piece. And I understand perfectly why that is important from a cable perspective, but more so is it because of it, the ability for digital mixers to be able to record scenes. So that if you're, if you're doing a production where you're having to go from scene to scene, like in a theater, you're able to then recall those scenes instantly. I'm assuming that's why he's doing that, but I would have loved to hear specifically why he chooses digital mixers like the Yamaha. Mr. Comfort. I, if I remember correctly, he talked a lot about much less noise, signal to noise ratio, too, is yeah. what I under, if I remember what he had said in the past. At, at the risk of sounding contrarian, here I go. Um, I think that w with any, um, you know, what do we say all the time, you know, with much power comes great, or with great power comes great responsibility. I think anytime we get to a point where we are um, pushing boundaries, um, maybe that's uh, the number of mics, maybe that's the, uh, the length of a cable. You know, I've heard Alex say many times, I don't let any analog audio go more than six feet. Um, that's, uh, that's a nice ideal to live in. And maybe in 2020, that's not hard, but I've, I've set up many sound systems and run many mic feeds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet and if you have quality cables that are properly shielded, you will not have a problem. The problem is, is that you have to have, like I said, quality cables that are properly shielded. It's very easy for a shield to get damaged. It's very easy for a pin to get bent, whatever. And you have to have a certain level of mastery over that technology. But let's face it, we've, we've heard great audio on giant sound systems that were all entirely analog. And we've all grown up with those. Is digital easier to, to achieve a level of expertise? Yeah. But you have to have a whole lot of money and a bunch of boxes. Uh, Bill, do you have something to add? Yeah, I do. I just wanted to address the fact that I, for me, the primary fundamental difference between analog and digital is that honestly, digital allows metadata to travel with signals in or, or files because there is such an incredibly huge amount of power in leveraging metadata to make your work life easier. Um, and it, it's across all sorts of digital signals. And I, I honestly think it's probably only used about 10% of the amount that it really should be. But once you understand how to, to encode and manage the metadata that's traveling along with your signals, I've found circumstances where it takes two weeks worth of work on the back end and collapses collapses it into half an hour. It, it can add that much productivity, efficiency, extra value, but you can't get it with analog. 
It only happens in the digital realm. So that to me is the big difference. Mickey, last word. <laughs> okay, pressure's on. Oh, yeah, I think like yeah, the don't, whole- don't, don't screw it up. There's gotta be, there's gotta be good stuff. I, all right. Uh, I think the whole like keeping the entire chain digital is like, is, is like you, you do that if you want to maintain full transparency from the start of the chain until the end of the chain. I mean, like, yeah, like um, unbalanced cables, no more than two meters. That's like any professional production would have that mindset. Having good cables, any professional production would have that would have that mindset. That's a given. Um, but one thing you can never um, you can never get rid of if you are going through multiple ADDA conversions is it's not go you're not going to have the same signal at the start and the same signal at the end because there you are doing changes there when whenever you do analog to digital and digital to analog conversion. So if you want to maintain transparency throughout the chain, which some productions might need that, <clears throat> might need that, some don't. Um, if you, but if you need it or if you want it, then digital would be the way to go. Yeah, I will say the last time I bought a large audio console of you know forty eight mono input, it was twenty, I don't know, like twenty four thousand dollars. I spent at least half of that in the the cabling uh it was high end it was custom i don't solder like you mickey so i had to have i had the the folks at whirlwind build all my you know all my interconnect between my rack and my and my box and or the, chris the, you're the, an editor what did you need a console that size for sometimes i like to mix audio anyway uh we said last word uh colin and then victor will get to close out his question I, I'm going to try to summarize more concisely than Mickey. Let's see. Uh, digital has a different price performance curve than analog. You can get uh, relatively good performance at a relatively low price point in digital, whereas in analog, you're going to pay quite a bit more for higher quality, higher that same level, high level performance, but you also have a... a uh, much higher top end performance than you're ever going to get out of digital. And Victor, are you sorry okay. you asked this question? No, I appreciate everyone's input uh, and, and verification. So I appreciate that. I do have to go. So I want to check my sync one last time. And uh, it's been about an hour. So sometimes it's taken longer than this. So I'm, if it's good, I'm very happy. I'm going to um, be tearing perfect. all this down. I think you fixed okay. it, man. Yeah, it's, well, it's horrible. It's in sync. It's it's just terrible. We'll, we'll see tomorrow because all of this is being torn down and I'll be using the ISO. So we'll uh, go on the adventure. I appreciate you guys putting up with my... Can you play yourself out, Victor? Can you play yourself out? Ra -da -da -da, ra -da -da -da. <laughs> That's about all. <laughs> very good. Okay, moving forward. Jeff Dooley from Chicago says... Could, could we say then the best way to resolve audio video delay issues is to use a pre a mix pre three two uh, I don't know that you need to no no I think that's no. A wrong no I think I think the best way to resolve audio and video sync issues is to have the audio and the video come through the same device I think that yes and, and I gotta say I'm like Mickey. I'm sitting here on my I'm at, uh, on a webcam, just a crappy little webcam, and I'm watching all these guys, you know, with these great cameras. Chris Comfort, your camera looks fantastic. Phil, look, your camera looks fantastic. My favorite on the whole panel is Garrick. I can't remember Garrick's last name. His whatever, everything he's doing. Like I've chatted with him multiple times, but the the prospect of getting into all these delay issues just like ah, i don't want to do that i'd rather just have a crappy camera jeffrey than mickey uh, i agree with you on a uh, single device but if that's not a possibility if you have to have multiple microphones set up in some way then the best answer is to make your chain uh from the microphone to the uh to the device that's going to stream out as little as possible the more you have in between the more chance that it has of going out of sync. Mickey, then Kyle? Yeah, like 
uh, the best way to solve it. Like sometimes sending it to the camera might might not be the best solution if your camera has crappy input chains and in audio input chains, which most cameras do. Um, and <laughs> says the audio like, professional. Yep. Uh, the best way to resolve it is to measure the amount of delay and dial in that amount of delay yeah. to in, in the audio chain so it lines up. Kyle. Uh, just since the question came back up again, I'm doing a sync test uh, with my situation to see how it looks. You look fairly in sync, but you're a couple of frames off. I can't, I'm not. I'm not smart enough to tell you which direction. It's but... consistently off. Then that's that's so. There's no slippage. Is the point of the test? So good. Okay. Your audio is no. leading your video. No microphone shrinkage. Okay. Sky says Chris Fenwick. I've bought Crumple Pop Levelmatic for my leveling audio on Premiere. How do you use it? Any tips? Uh, Levelator will not run on Max Catalina. Um, Sky, I feel bad, and if and if need be, I will refund the purchase price of your app. Um, I don't actually use it. I was just pointing it out. And Sky's gone. Is Sky gone? Awesome. Wow, that was a waste Let's of time. Let's hope Sky's gone because he's crying right now. Why? Why is he crying? Because you wasted his money. I didn't waste his money. I'm not even certain it doesn't work. I'm just saying you should look at this thing. He'll Bill, do you have something you want to add? Yeah, I just have to pop in. Uh, Sky Levelator will work on Catalina. They updated it about two months ago. So if you want that tool, it is perfectly available for brand new. All right. And Jason Fitzgerald from New York That's, City. Look who's here. Oh, Sky, you're back. Sky, we just answered your question. Did you hear us off camera? Got that film there's noir look going on. A couple of there's a couple of mute switches between you and me. And all oh, of them are uh, there we go. Sorry. When you plug when you use your your outdoor tool. Did you hear the answer to your question? Uh level later? Uh, wasted my money no i don't think you wasted your money i'm just saying i had not used it i said you might want to take a look at it uh, also bill davis has uh successfully managed to get a levelator to uh be upgraded so it works on catalina on catalina i yes I, I, okay bill can you send me that link Sure. I just go. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's called um, something networks is the company that manufactures, but they they everybody loves it. Everybody wanted it. So they rewrote it for Catalina 64 uh, bit compliant and it's there and it's free. Lovely. All right. So Jason Fitzgerald says Thank any you. recommendations for live streaming platform that will reach aud an audience in mainland China from the United States? It's a pre recorded event dreamed as if live no actual live content it it if that makes a difference zoom webinar pano pano panopto others <clears throat> i think uh i'm gonna let jason go jason and then i'm Jeffrey. gonna parrot what alex has said in the past you need a chinese cdn partner or there is no guarantee that it will go out yes. period yes J jeffrey were you gonna say the same thing I was going to say the same thing. You, you definitely need a, a partner in China to do that. There is only one or two ways in and out, or actually out. I think it can go in without a problem, but going out is the bigger problem. Mickey? I'm just wondering, like, would this WeChat have a streaming platform? Like, I mean, it does, but they can still interrupt it. Um, the the exchange that we had last time on the topic was, uh, I said that my girlfriend, who uh, at the time was a Chinese native, had a Weibo um, Nate that was activated in China. She was here, and um, didn't have an issue. But long story short, unless you are that lucky, um, it's just just get a CDN partner, or there are no guarantees. I think the other thing that Alex said that was really interesting, and I and I didn't totally get it but he said the easiest way to get a big footprint in china is to put it on a specific satellite he says people are hungry for content they'll just it's like oh let's let's put this out i think he was speaking of india russia was right. it india russia it was yeah, yeah. he basically said south asia something. basically asia sat five asia, asia sat sat, five. There you asia go. Sat i'm, I'm yeah. gonna i'm yeah. gonna confess something i'm i'm not totally listening all the time so he doesn't really highly likely it. Uh, okay, uh, next question. Uh, let's see, what do we got? There's a couple of music questions on there for Peter. I think we'll save those for next time. 
Um, there's really just Sky's other question about the Shows Up show. What was that, Sky? Alex has said that he's worked with Patreon and it's called Shows Up and it's on YouTube and I've done all kinds of searching and I can't seem to find it. So it, it those are two very fascinating topics for me and to hear Alex's perspective or if anybody has seen that about a just showing up, I think hey, is uh, awesome. Sky. Yes, please. The chat logs are in the discord and the link to it is in there from a few days ago. I will go yeah. searching. Thank you. Mike. Mike nice advertisement, work. Mr. Andrews. Yeah. By the way, I was uh, Mike and I were chatting last night and he walked me through the custom stuff that he's done and the code that he's written and got some assistance on to do all of that work to get the chats into the Discord and all the links. And it's super impressive. It's not just a copy paste thing. Uh, you should go check that out. Yes, Jeffrey. Uh, I put the actual link in of the uh, Patreon event, which also has a link to where you can find the show, which is, of course, on YouTube. Does, right. And the, does that include uh, Chris's comfort? I had a question about the links Chris Summers put in yesterday. Mike, do you know if that got into your uh, history? Yeah, I mean, all the links are there. Um, and, and you can download, can download the file of the links. You know, you know, look at it. You know, I mean, in those pasted right. on the web, you can download the file and the entire chat. So They're both there. Yeah, I gotta, say, I gotta it's say, in Discord my... in chat links. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, so great, Mike. Thanks for copying and pasting and stuff. You're doing a whole, he's doing a whole lot of work to make it like really legible, and it's it's really impressive. Yeah, Mike Jason. deserves a round of applause because he works really hard on the back end of this. Uh, Jason, you have your hand up, and you're not, and it's not shaking. I yeah, assume you have something one, to say. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my other hand works too, but no, it wasn't shaking. I've got to say one of the things, one of the most robust and repeatable things about office hours is that I, I think I, I speak for everyone when I, I, I say that I really like that we all kind of impress each other. Um, that's pretty cool. I don't. Fenwick doesn't impress me. I don't impress anybody. <laughs> no. But all the rest of you guys are pretty impressive. <laughs> Jazz, jazz hands for Jeffrey Powers too. Okay, so so I'm gonna admit this is super awkward. So Alex had asked me this morning, texted me, and he said, "Hey, uh, it was actually during mic check." He says, "You know, the guy's gonna cancel, and it looks like he's gonna cancel. Can you take over?" I said, "What do you want me to do?" He goes, "We'll just continue the questions." Yeah, and then we, and then we have no questions. And so here's a question: Have we all improved our video quality as people start to drop out? It looks like in my grid. It looks like people's resolution is getting better. I don't know if that's just me or or because of the little boxes are getting a little the app bigger. Works. Yeah, it just looks good though. You guys look great. So how many show of hands, how many people have multiple cameras set up on their system right now? Zach, Zach, you disconnected your spare camera. Okay, thank you. I, yeah, I do, but I don't I have got uh, plastic bags over the cameras, you know. I've got them input. But I don't have them switched on. I have three cameras normally. What do you put them? Normally... What are you trying to? Well, I'm a dust Sup freak. I'm a freak for dust. And as soon as I'm not using Nikki. something, no, I cover it. <laughs> it's a thing. But I got to tell you, I am really disappointed about uh, about uh, uh, Peter Peter Himmelman. And I look forward to seeing him in a couple of weeks. I managed a recording studio in the mid '80s where he did a lot of work with a band. And he was very well Phil, thought of. Can you please? You know, we had a great time Academy with that Award so, here. Is sorry, that what's going on? <laughs> can you, that was that your music, thing. Phil. That wasn't me, Chris. Wasn't me. Okay, Chris. Yes, Paul. I, I asked two questions today, neither of which got answered. I asked a question about NDI. How would you control an NDI camera remotely? And the other question was, what are some great uh, video apps? Uh, editing and, and both shooting of, apps. Both of those questions got both answered. Both of those got it discussed. Did, did not, the PC part of that question did not get answered. Everybody was like, Mac, Mac, What does this, political Mac, correctness that. have to do with either of those questions? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll ask it again. So just what, saying, just Chris. Tell just us, saying. Oh, okay. So what, which one part star, of the question? Be specific. Ask, ask be the question you want. Okay. You got NDI on the Android and on on the Mac phone, you know, the iPhone, and uh, you want to control it. You want to, you want to uh, 
uh, your zoom SOL. in and out and focus and all that and without using team viewer how do i control that camera there's no sol there's no there's that's no not a good answer i know not a good answer well, i didn't write the software yeah and the doesn't here's, carry those here's here's touch. here's the yeah. answer Here's the answer for you. Unless the camera can do it, like for instance, I had, uh, any PTZ camera will have PTZ software written into it, and then NDI will be able to control it to move it around, to zoom it in, zoom it out. But if you're talking about taking an iPhone or an Android and doing a manual or, or a digital zoom in and, and zoom out or AI pan or anything like that, unless the app can do it, then you can't, uh, you won't be able to control it through NDI. It has the ability to control it through NDI but the device needs to also have that ability. Well, I don't need to use NDI. I could use anything, right? What would what would work for that? What would be a workaround, Jeffrey? Once, once again, you're talking about device versus software. Software can do almost anything, and chances are it has the ability to do it. But if the protocols aren't on the device and the app that you're running that device with, it's not gonna. It's not gonna know. It's it's gonna hear those responses and go. I have no idea what to do. So the answer, really, the answer is if the app has it and it has and they they put that stuff in there to be set up to be controlled by NDI and NDI understands that that and they have that communication, then you should be able to do it. But if it doesn't have it, you can't do it. Yeah, I okay, think I guess Jeffrey, like... Jeffrey spent an extended period of time to tell you exactly what I told you. Okay. So I guess. what I'm doing right now is I just switched on the ATEM to my iPhone, which is just connected by um, an HDMI cable into the ATEM Mini switcher. And so I'm just pinch zooming the interface and moving it around, and that is being displayed. So there are simple ways to do this. Right. He, he, but I, you're doing that from the iPhone. Paul, you're, right? you're looking for a It's, it's control, the iPhone app right? that is making that possible, not yeah. anything yeah, he, in NDI. But he's looking and, for a remote control. I think, yeah, I think Paul's right, saying right, that right, if, Colin, if you have right. the iPhone way you over there, the time, then right. you want to control it from here. Yeah. So that's that's a different that's a different use case. Okay. So a couple of things. Number one, Paul, your friend, Mr. John P Giovanni Preto says, try camo, but it is a Mac only thing. Camo. Also, yeah. See, I'll, see this, it's only Mac. We're only getting Mac answers today. Um, yeah, that well, there was the a case. there was a tool at Mac for a long time, Quartz Composer, that allowed a lot of this stuff to be to happen really easily. It, it's been deprecated for years, but I think a lot of uh, developers used to leverage. Mike it. Andrew is showing us his lifeline, Mr. Andrews. Uh, I'm going to bring up a new topic. I don't know. I'm getting some kind of weird bug, which I ran into before. Well, before uh, we do that, before yeah. we do that. And I'll let you do that. I also have a couple of questions. So we're going to do, we're going to finish, Paul. I want to prove to Paul that we talked about his other thing. And then we have a couple of questions. Then we'll come to your topic. So hold on to that idea. Jot that down. Paul, what was your second question that you claim okay. we didn't discuss? Uh, great, great video editing and shooting apps for iOS and Android. And Android do they didn't have to be cross-platform? Is it? Well, no, maybe there, no, but maybe there aren't, maybe there aren't any great ones on Android. Is that a possibility? I mean, I think, you're, I think you're saying we possible. didn't discuss it. We did discuss it, but maybe nobody had any good recommendations. It's possible that 90% of the, the people in this room. I think we didn't room. discuss your questions. Adobe we did. Rush actually does. You just didn't get an answer you liked. That's all. That's all right. I'll thing. upgrade you to two stars from one, Chris. Two okay. stars. So we're going to go. We're going to. We have a couple more questions that have come. That's hundred percent. Oh, do, do we get more stars for making up nonsense answers that you <laughs> no. like? I, no. I, I don't know. I bet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Alex is away. Let's let's keep this let's keep this going. Uh, Lawrence Little Hale from Concord, North Carolina says, "Has anyone looked at this camera link?" This is an awkward way. By the way, Lawrence, this is an awkward way to ask, ask a question. One review mentioned the narrow angle of a view. So I can't, what is it? It is a DCZ1. Uh, oh, it's a Sony camera. Does it, can anybody, I, I, so here's the problem, Lawrence. When it's the, questions, the new ZV1 internet uh, camera, ZV1. It's yes. the, um, the, the new one they just came out that's with. The, it's the got live streaming camera. on it. So I, I'm, I'm, I wanna educate everybody here, all, all of us. When a question gets to me to read, it is, a, 
it, it is my understanding that the panelists cannot see it anymore. Is that correct? Okay. Here's the other problem. When well, it Chris, gets, it depends you know, on what we view can, mode you're we in. We can see it in the teleprompter view, but it's right. not available to anyone else. Cool. Is where you're sending it. Yeah. So it's not the other issue in the popular or recent queue. Right. The other issue is when it gets to me, it is in a window that does not allow me to copy and paste it. So when I get a link, I can't even go cross-reference it. So just use a model number in the future. Um, oh, look at this. Everybody's got a picture of it. Uh, can we... Can we show, oh, there we go, Phil. Um, so uh, recommendations on audio. Oh, I'm sorry. And I advanced the question. Um, yeah, it looks cute. I don't know. I don't Chris, know I'm on the ZV1 right now. I'm, I switched to the ZV1. It's got an incredible <laughs> uh, video <laughs> resolution. Look at, look at how it refocuses. See how yes, it refocuses? Yes, but is it on Android? That's what I want to know. Uh, okay, so. It looks like it. it's, uh, here, let me go back to my answer. I scroll down. Has anyone looked at this camera? Yes, Lawrence, we have looked at it. Paul, who buys every camera and microphone available <laughs> in the space, says he loves it. Uh, so that we've and now absolutely we have all answered at that it. question. There was quite a bit of latency. And uh, Jason, do you have something to say about the Z? -Z yeah, no, no, on a more serious PR? note. I'm, I'm sorry, Paul, I, I shouldn't have said that. Um, field of view, just so everyone knows, is a universal thing. Zoom, you know, you'll see 4x zoom, 6x zoom, and you'll see all these debates about the sensor size, you know, as it relates to the, to the zoom of the lens. With a camera like this one, all you're worried about is how much of the field is seen. So it, just to standardize it, I'm going to have to look through to get a sense of, you know, how much of the horizon this shows. What was the app that uh, Mr. Summers showed us yesterday that showed that where you could like get a, a sense of what the field of view of various lenses and cameras was? Sky just listed Ecam. all of those apps in chat. I don't know. Lenser. Lenser. Lenser is the database of lenses. I oh, think it's right. Pcam yeah. for Bill for Davis. The... Do you have something you would like to add? I did, but I think I it may have flooded out of my mind as we were talking about. Oh, I know oh, what it was. Okay. It, oh, it had to right. do with. Um, the capture software that comes with a lot of these PTZ cameras will sometimes let you change your field of view. I know the Logi app for the Logitech small cameras do that. And I think there are some third party things. So if your problem is that the camera has too big a is field. Is this of Sony view, camera that we're discussing a PTZ camera? I no, didn't no, not, catch this that. Is, I'm not talking about PTZ. I'm talking oh, about all Oh, I thought we were talking cameras. about the CZ1. No? Yeah, but I'm just saying that you might be able to get an app that goes in front of it that changes that field of view if that's your only yeah. issue with that okay. camera. All yeah, right, it's so not a PTZ, not a PTZ. All right, so camera. let's, yeah, I was just, I didn't understand how we all of a sudden got to PTZ from the CZL and then a P1. Is that Sorry. CZL, the camera, the the vloggers are all uh, kind of migrating towards? It seems it is. seen that it a is. lot It is, it is. Justine is our, uh, I, Justine, did yeah. an incredible video on it. Everybody that watches that video goes out and can't buy it fast enough. It's just, I want to know uh, if people awesome are going camera. to... I want to know if manufacturers are going to make vlogging cameras for people that are single versus people that have a significant other, because you might want a slightly wider field of view if you have a girlfriend. Anyway, TJ Asher from Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota says, recommendation on audio editing software for editing recorded audio, mostly voice material in the free slash Colin slash Alex price brackets. Okay, so let's do this in order. Free. Who's got a recommendation for a free app? Audacity. Audacity. I, I think everybody Audacity. says Audacity. Plus one Audacity. Okay. Next in the Colin price bracket. In other words, super I, I would refer you back to Audacity because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes free is good enough. Um, but really, I mean, it it does everything you need it to do in in the real world. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, Mickey, you do a little bit of audio editing, don't you? Yeah, uh, in, on the the Colin Price, the mid mid range um, yeah. Reaper. What is I've never heard of Reaper. It's amazing. Reaper's amazing. I've got it another one in the good. Colin level. Uh, Fission is very easy from Rogue Amoeba. Okay. Simple edits only though, right? Jeffrey, just just simple cutting. Yeah. 
Doesn't doesn't Da Vinci right. if you use Da Vinci Resolve, which uh, they have that you have a free level of that. Doesn't that also do audio that you can uh, you can fix? Yeah, it's I was gonna primarily say, a I... video editor. I think it it has some audio functionality in that you need to lay audio into it, but I wouldn't call it an audio editor. Well, I will say this about Final Cut, and this is getting more expensive, three hundred bucks. Uh, Final Cut, if you only have audio in your timeline, you're actually editing at a subframe level, and if you primarily are doing video you don't think that that's a big deal until you start cutting audio and you realize oh that's a big deal uh and so uh subframe audio editing in final cut is super powerful and i've cut a lot of audio only things in final cut just because it was convenient and i know it very well phil and then we'll let bill add some final words for mac i'm a dais i just love it i've been using it for a long long time and it's about 20 bucks Okay, and then on the low end, Bill, do you have some final words? On wasn't this? on the low end, but I was actually going to emphasize your point, and it may be true in Premiere and, and even Avid, for all I know. But it used to be that that the audio was truly a stepchild in the video world. We would be lucky to get decent audio coming off the field cameras. That has all changed, and now the audio pathways in most of these NLEs are as clean as. Uh, in logic or anything else, which has caused me to migrate. I haven't touched a DAW or anything else for any audio work in the last 10 years. I do literally all of it in Final Cut and I and it's keywording tools and um, the, all the logic plugins are existing there. And I would imagine that Premiere and other um, software has followed the same path and that audio work in an NLE is much more robust than it used to be. Sky, I'm interested in your input on that as a Premiere heavy user and Avid user. Do Premiere and, uh, and Avid offer subframe audio editing? Uh, you would take that over to Audition if you wanted to get much more intimate Interesting. On the, Can I, in the, in the I Adobe world. Lost... And Pro Tools is, is the go-to because it's owned by Avid, Avid on, the right, other, right, on the other right. side. Okay. So, so in the... Adobe ecosystem and the Avid ecosystem, they're still very much keeping. Well, they've, they've tried to umbrella things inside of one user interface, but it's, the specialty it's, tools. It's, it's definitely an interesting problem because every, I mean, ideally you could do it in one app, but everybody has their audio app too. Uh, Jason yeah. and well, then they've, Kyle. They've actually, what they did was they bought it and then they hijacked it and, and shoved it on because a video world is video world. Audio is an audio world. And then they've figured out a way to pretend to make it one app, but they're still right. separate apps. It reminds me of the days of uh, the early days of Microsoft when they, exactly. they, exactly tried, the same. they, they started to market the, the suite, the suite the of tools. Microsoft office suite. And suite, literally yeah. all they did was take yeah. Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, and Outlook, and just shrink wrapped them together. And they called it a suite of apps. Well, uh, they did more than that, though. If you're in the corporate world, world, is they made it all unbelievably cheap. So it was like $100 per user for all of that stuff. So all the corporations. Yeah, but ran, in terms of in terms of the functionality of what the code actually did, it was just well, four. Let me tell you the sinister the part beginning. of that is it, in the corporations, they all jumped on it. It's only a hundred dollars, so we all jumped on it. This is our standard, and then all of the file formats are proprietary. So once everybody had their yeah. documents and in we all, Excel, we were all there. you're yeah. locked in, right? So then it was like now now three hundred dollars a seat. Oops. <laughs> so. so Jason and then Kyle. Kyle, you had your hand up, right? Jason? Um, I just, I have to, plus when I know Pro Tools is kind of the old school king, I adore Audition. It's the way that I cut my teeth. It's the way that I learned to do multi-track editing. It's probably not the best these days. That said, I love it. Yeah, it's good. I did my podcast in Adobe Audition for two, you know, 300 episodes or whatever. Uh, Kyle, a couple of podcasts. Uh just uh resolve like i was wondering if uh davinci resolve had the same sort of like you were talking about final cut subframe mm -hmm. audio editing yeah I don't if, know. It, if it's a Does anybody similar know not built for that but it might be halfway decent if it's free black, in your black magic also has hijacked or yeah, bought up an older audio system and has Fairlight. incorporated it into their suite Fairlight. and it is Fairlight. very deep Fairlight is very deep very very but deep. but but at the video level in the resolve editor i know that a lot of apple people landed at uh 
uh, black magic and, and we're heavy in developing resolve. Mike, does anybody know, does, does uh, resolve do subframe audio editing? I think when you actually jump into the Fairlight window, it'll do things that you couldn't do with that same audio file in the edit window. Okay. And if I remember correctly, I was wrestling with this the other day. I think it's subframe. It, okay. it does. I, I don't know whether it's subframe, but yes, it does transfer the your project from from sub app to sub app quite nicely. So if Fairlight is capable of it, everything is there for you. I, right. Chris, can you maybe d define subframe for well? People? So let's I know, say I think I know what you're talking about. So let's say different. you're you're dealing with something at twenty. You know, let's just say thirty frames per second. That means. For every one second of time, you can divide something 30 times. And if you zoom way in on your timeline, you will literally see the cursor is at frame 17, set frame 18, frame 19. It'll snap. And, that, and I can cut at any one of those points. If I want to take a piece of audio and move it over, it's going to move one frame. Now, in the video world, that seems like, wow, frame accurate. You know, like we even tout that as like a big deal. But when you're trying to match audio, especially if you have like second source audio where you have camera audio and then record it somewhere else, a one frame jump is gigantic. And I believe, I could be wrong about this, but the subframe resolution of an audio edit in Final Cut, I wanna, the, there's two numbers that pop up. Bill, you probably know, is it 30? It's not all the way to the sample rate of. Uh, it's definitely audio. not sample for, rate. Right, which they, would be they, I think it's like a hundred divisions of a, of a frame or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but it's you can definitely slip and slide and deal with audio at a huge, at an order of magnitude finer resolution than you can your video because the video is the timekeeper in video editing apps. Right. That has to be done right. It's primary. So these tools help people who want to do subtle audio changes to affect them successfully. And that's one of the things that makes a good NLE is that you can get down into your audio and deal with it precisely. Do you have anything else you want to say? Just checking. No. Sky. Sky. You're, you're muted, Sky. There's too many mute switches between you and me. I'm desperately trying to find love <laughs> later and get this problem solved. And Bill Davis said, it's there. The Conversation my... Network is the name of the organization that, that I, gave been... away level Scroll later. back. It went right It went right into chat when you were talking about it. Scroll back a bit. You'll see it. Okay. Well, I no, I'm there. I'm on that website. I downloaded it last night to my brand new Catalina latest update 2019. And it says, sorry, we don't play with that toy. So that it's, is it, that's weird. a 32-bit it's version. The 64-bit version has got to be right there then. You would think so. That's why I'm coming back to my okay. brother, All brothers right. so from other I'm gonna. Mothers. We're going to prove the who produces bit. this show. So, Mike Andrews, I'm going to give you the option. A while ago, you said you wanted to change topics, but you also have the next question in the queue. I'm going to give you the choice. Where do we go from here? Well, that was a new topic. Right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. the new topic is the question that's in the queue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you why don't you explain the new topic then? Um, I just had two instances where um, I switched the audio output in Zoom to the speakers to my headphones. When it's on the speakers, um, I can get a message in Zoom that says uh, switching switching off your speakers. And then in a few seconds, it comes back and the speakers start working again. And I'm not changing anything. Now, I do have all this stuff plugged into a USB hub. Uh, and this is this has happened bad. in a couple of sessions. But anyway, Zoom is randomly not liking talking to my speakers. Don't know why. So, Colin, do you have an input? The only time I see that is when I have a bad USB cable or a loose port. But I've seen that in Zoom. I've seen that particularly in Discord, actually, which also pulls the device constantly looking for it to drop. Um, because these devices are, it is serial, a serial protocol. So if you pull it at the wrong point, it shouldn't happen. But if you pull it at just the wrong point, it might appear to not be there. Data might appear not to not be there. I have seen a recurring problem happening with Zoom. And it's 
and it's like one of these things you ever have those things where you're having a problem and you and you want to talk to somebody about it but you realize you're probably the only person on the planet that's using all the same things together where i'm uh, i'm in zoom i launch a uh, screen flow i record my screen and when i stop my recording for some reason zoom decides let's go to the next audio source in your list and because of my system i i have a fairly extensive list of audio sources and it just says yeah i'm going to go to the next one and i, th and I think i think it's actively pulling audio devices at too high a rate i think that's i mean that's why what do you mean what does that mean i don't understand that it, well it's looking for the device to be present and pushing data so if the device driver says we can't pull that device at this moment because there are other things in your USB chain that we need to get data from, then uh, then it's suddenly not okay. there as far as the app. So, so it sees that there's a, a void and it says, oh, let's go find some audio and it just goes to something else. Maybe. I mean, it, it, honestly, it's it's really guesswork. <laughs> has, so I mean, has it, anybody it's, else it's, it's seen- It's technically accurate that that could happen but the data rate is so high that it should never happen in practice. So has anybody else seen Zoom just seemingly randomly change audio sources? See, this is what I meant. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, I, mean I, 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 could, I, I could look for a loose cable. I just checked it. This yeah, the, the easy answer is to swap cables and swap inputs swap until ports, you yeah. see it. Yeah, but yeah, the, the, only way, the only way it would swap is if it didn't see the, uh, one audio source or you plugged in a brand new audio source, it might yeah. switch it over. So like in my, in my Zoom speaker select uh, menu, I have eight different sources it could select, it could choose from. And it just says, yeah, I'm going to go to the next one. Anyway, uh, okay, Mike, are you satisfied with that answer? Yeah, I just want to mention in case somebody else runs into it, but whatever. It's, I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm surrounded by cables here. Of course, everything can go bad. <laughs> that bears. Okay, uh, Jeffrey Powers, serious question. Mickey, the one method to keep the capsule dry you mentioned, do you have to poke a hole in that? Uh, no. So what, what we do is we keep it taut so that um, it, it it just resonates the voice directly back into the capsule. It's almost like if you drink, think of like a, a drum head like skin. So what, what was tight. the one method? Um, we put uh, unlubricated condoms on the on the capsule. Ah, yeah. So during like like extreme weather situations, that's what we do. And we also do that for shotgun mics and extreme shoots like for reality <laughs> shows. Um, and yeah, we, we Did keep it you get a we, few DBs, a few DB down or not. Definitely. We get attenuation, especially on the high, uh, the high end, the higher frequencies. Yeah. It's going to be a bit muffled, of course, but it's better than not broadcasting anything. Speaking yeah. of attenuation, you have a few attenuators between you and us. You've dropped about seven DB. Checking, seven checking one, two. Hello. Bill Davis. Hello. Yeah. yeah, I was going to emphasize, and this is a, a legitimate question, and it's worth doing. Uh, some uh, hypercardioid and long shotgun type microphones that this technique is really valuable for, um, some of them are very sensitive to humidity. There's a, a lot of anecdotal evidence that some shotguns do well in higher humidity than others do. So it can really change the nature of the sound. Plus it can kind of almost shut them down if the humidity gets too high. So if you're going to be using this in a rainstorm or a high thing, you'd wanna go inside to the air conditioned room before you put it on and then make sure that it's well rubber banded or something like that to try to keep as much humidity out of the mic elements and electronics as possible. Interesting. All right. Uh, that's uh, Sky. The office hours team came through. Levelator is available on the Apple App Store. Sky, you have a bizarre key going on. I don't know what's going on with your shirt, but the sun is extremely bright, and I've got this wimpy little turn screen. Turn off your keyer. No, turn I, off your keyer. We can see through your shirt to some. It's not keying your key background. It's just keying your shirt. Oh, oh, because my daughter used my system yesterday. And I've got all kinds of badness that I haven't unbadded. Keying request. Sky, I don't know if I'd let you edit something for me. You're scaring me here. 
There we oh, go. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> hey, by the way, I did find that when you put on the green screen, it does that little trim thing on the top and the bottom of the little black bars. It was weird yesterday. To be clear, what we're green. seeing there is the difference between the go. aspect ratio of true 4K and Ultra HD. Everybody realizes that. Right? I'm actually using my Mac PowerBook Pro, so I'm not using my, my 4K. Uh, black magic this is coming out of the uh 2019 i want a mac power book pro where do i find that model it's just add the pro word pro to it it's... <laughs> is is that one of those ones with the translucent teal is that pre i uh, pre a intel <laughs> yeah g2.5 nice crt monitor or something like Arcelous. that merciless yeah. merciless you make I... one one bad you know, actress joke at the beginning of the session and then Okay, so I'm going to ask everybody's opinion. Uh, we're 24 minutes before the end of the hour. We've gone through all the questions. I'm getting text messages from people saying, this is the worst broadcast ever. <laughs> Wait, yes, okay, it is. no, this is a different question. Um, should we should we just wrap this or do we all just want to leave our cameras I'll, live? I'll make it better. Hour? No, keep I gotta going, Chris. Anyway, keep so. going. Keep going. I got to leave keep anyway. Keep it going. I got to I got to go anyway. To it, so yeah, Chris. let it let it let it let it do see what you Chris. need to do, bye but bye. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Okay. Zach. There are 132 people still watching. 130 now. <laughs> so the the people who are watching if if those are not all extra monitors coming from Mickey's house. <laughs> um you can ask questions or maybe they just want to see me flounder and like vamp I'm not going to, Kyle, Kyle has a question. I got a question for you, Chris, especially uh -oh. uh, because of the uh, topic earlier of auto update and the new final cut update. Have you done your update? I did. I did it yesterday. The, the I'm in the middle of archiving. So, so here's the deal. I'm in the middle of many, pro, many projects. I, I always Same. find it. Um, I always find it. Um, I don't, I'm trying to say this in a non-condescending way and I, and I can't figure it out. I always find it cute when people say, well, don't do it in the middle of a project. Our company has probably 40 projects that are current right now, like right, right now in various stages Same. of completion. So if I were to wait until I'm not in the middle of a project, I would never upgrade. I'd still be on, you know, Mac OS seven or whatever. So, um, so that's not a possibility. Uh, sometimes you just get a sense, like spidey sense about an update. And I don't know why. I'm still on Mojave. I have not taken the Catalina plunge, mainly because I heard some really scary things about... Um, uh, Codex. Yeah. Well, well, Codex is one thing. That, that's not that big of a deal because we don't deal with those Codex. But uh, the um, like large servers... I've heard some things about large servers getting corrupted with Catalina mm. and, and I, and I don't really have the time to like go read every forum. And so I just, eh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm yeah, literally that was primarily an issue with one of the early releases. They, they fixed that in like week three. Of I would, I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I did do the 10, four, nine, I believe it's called yesterday. And it seems fine. I have not run across my my personal Final Cut pet peeve, and every time I've tried to prove it to Apple, they say they can't reproduce it. And whenever I ask people publicly, I seem to be the only one that is having the problem. And I see the hands up. Uh, I will come back to you. Just let me say this real quick. I don't want you to have to hold your hand up. Um, and my issue, Kyle, is often. And, and we see this across the office, so it's not one computer, but often in our workflows, when we create compound clips, when we double click to open said compound clip that's nested inside a, a, a project, anything I try to do inside that compound clip, like add another piece of media or, um, I think even just trimming something inside that compound clip causes a beach ball. And there's no getting out of it. You the, the system is gonna crash. Well, it, you, you have to force quit Final Cut. The only thing that I have found to get past 
what I am labeling a corrupted compound clip or a non-editable compound clip, and I apologize, it's getting totally final cutty here, um, is down into to, the weeds. Is yeah, well, these the weeds are high. The weeds are high. The only thing that I've found to get around it is to force quit, restart the pro the library, XML the library, create a fresh library, import that XML, and I would say nine times out of 10, you can now edit that compound clip. I've gotten so messed up in the past where I've actually had to recreate said compound clip from scratch and it's super annoying. Okay, so who had their hands up? Uh, Jason and Sky and Mickey. So Jason. Have you, um, have you tried just first, I've seen that. Um, and Thank God, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> have you um have you tried just you know force quit and then blow away your proxies blow away your renders in in you know final cut library manager the third party app um you shouldn't need to reboot after your proxies are blown away i i bet it's that uh i don't use proxies uh um renders i've tried that yeah sometimes you know uh trashing the prefs now it's like hold down a couple keys. What is it, Bill? It's like command option and start the app or something. Mm, PR to clear your parameter RAM. Uh, yeah, I haven't done that in, since, you know, Bush 2 was in office. Um, uh, Scott, you had your hand up? Well, I also know is that Tom Wineland in San Francisco is asking, hey, Chris, what's the best features oh, for up question. that you've upgraded in FCPX that you like? And my question on top of that would be to sync outside exterior audio with your source audio on your video uh is that just a right click before you create the clip or i mean before you create a timeline are you talking about in final cut to, to in final cut second in source final, audio yeah 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 syncing yeah uh what i do, do, you do how I, do you do it i'll tell you what i do and the yes. and there's a reason i do this i select the multiple things in the bin and i typically make them a multicam even if it's just one camera shot and one audio file and the reason i do that is it's very easy to double click on that multicam and go in to the audio bit and nudge it if it's off a little bit because sometimes it is off a little bit and then i just treat that multicam i select the one video source and the the other audio source and then I treat it like a normal thing. And it, what confused me last night when I finally did it was it creates it as a source. And then I tried to output that as a, that it kept trying to share it. And it says, you can't share a source. You have to turn it into a project before you can share. You have that. to either make, you have to put it into a timeline. So like yeah. a project or actually, yeah. a con you can actually share a compound clip. Copy. A compound the, the the difference between what is a compound clip and what is a project, a timeline, is negligible. And as a matter of fact, for a while, I was just ma making everything as compound clips until I started having problems with compound clips. Um, and what other features in Final Cut Tom wants to know? Um, I'm so deep into uh, this one project that I'm working on for the last few days that I, none of it touches the new feature set of Final Cut. Uh, Bill? So first of all, I want to do the the big thing that I was thinking about, which is back to the upgrade story, because we, we've gotten into the weeds of Final Cut, and I know not everybody uses it. So I, I will what? touch, do that really quickly. But um, the when you see a big point upgrade, that's a time where you don't really want to move quickly. Apple has been really good at these minor dot, you know, 10 dot something dot something. If that's the upgrade, you're usually pretty safe because they vet those really very, very tightly. If it's 10.7 to 10.8 or something like that, you want to be careful about those. Just use um, your backup software and make sure you have something you can get back to if something goes wrong in those. Okay, now specifically about the things, um, the two or three things, Smart Conform was the biggest probably billboard feature on this. And it does something that uh, Adobe has been doing for a while, which is um, make different like social media and things like that easy to do so that you can output three or four different aspect ratios of your same project. 
Um, there are a lot more proxy options that are in there, including an H.264 and a bunch of alt scalings in there. That was a big feature upgrade for this one. Um, but I think the biggest thing that um, Phil Hodges on another program, in fact, he was on with Chris and talking about this, the biggest single thing I think here is that they've completely gutted the old code and made it ready for Apple Silicon when it comes, which for me as a Final Cut Pro 10 editor just means that they're fully committed to actually, keeping the app going. Actually, that's inaccurate. It's not ready for Apple, Apple Silicon. It's functioning on Apple Silicon. It's fully... Uh, Philip made made that was very uh, uh, adamant yeah, about adamant. that. Right. But what the the code that is currently shipping fully works on the current chips, and it fully works on the other. And whether it's two installers or whatever, I can't remember. But um, it's 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 absolutely. Ten it says to me Apple that Silicon ten or twenty already. years down the road, we're still going to be using this app. There's nothing to stop it. 10, 10 seconds. What is silicon? Apple silicon, please. It's their it Apple has decided that they're tired of dealing with Intel's processors. We're done. They've been making awesome chips in their phones and their iPads. They can make awesomer chips and they're going to put them in their own computers. They're done yep. with beautiful answer. They're done with Intel. That's 10 seconds. Thank you. Yeah, which means that, and we that do have going more questions. forward, you're always going to get more speed and more fluidity of your user thing because they are unlike, and, and I understand completely why the, the, the people who edit on other NLEs, you've got these workflows, they're incredibly mission critical for you. So you, you want updates to be very, uh, only when they're really necessary and they have to be stable because if you take down a movie studio or something like that, an update, that is, that is unacceptable totally. But Apple's always been in the other camp of we're going to, we're going to create and continue okay, we have, to we have tons forward. of questions, Bill. We, oh, okay, we now, sorry. we now yeah. have a ton of questions. All right. Okay. So yeah, let's fire through just, some of these. I was just so trying to fill time. So Jerry Simmons, uh, from Corona, California says, I'm using a switcher in our church service for the first time for two stage cameras and one camera on the audience. Any good training resources that would help us understand when switching is helpful for viewers and how much is too much? I'm going to just answer this and move on. There is a guy named, uh, I want to say Gosling, and I'm not talking about the actor Ryan Gosling, but there's a guy, it's called like Church Front Videos. This guy travels around to various churches around the country and he highlights what they're doing. One of the shows that he did was he went to a place called Bethel, which is in Northern California out in the sticks. This church is so big in this tiny town that they made a deal with the airport that they said, if you don't get this much travel into this town because of us, we will buy the tickets just bring flights into this tiny airplane, uh, airstrip, we don't care. <clears throat> anyway, this guy, Church Front Videos, went to Bethel and he sat down with their video director and he does like an hour on how they do it, why they do it, and it's spectacular. Go watch it, somebody, it's not that hard to find. Search for Bethel Church behind the scenes or something, your Google works as good as, as, good as mine. On Discord, there is also a gentleman that has created a Discord link called Black Bar, and it's quite, it's it's the church version of Office Hours. Oh, cool. Yeah, Black Bar. Yeah, I actually was talking to a preacher friend of mine in Oklahoma, and I suggested that he do something exactly like that. So, Jerry, <clears throat> it's a, uh, go check that out. There's plenty of people talking about this. There's too and, many people, too many and the, people talking. The Bethel, the Bethel mindset. I'm, I'm not. I'm not subscribing to their everything, but the the way their director guy thinks is is spot on. Uh, Mr. Preto, who is very adamant that I get to the questions, says, "Did anyone watch MacBreak Weekly and Renee's new Canon C500 Mark II? I think he needs a fill light." Crickets. Okay, moving on. Uh, Steven Richardson's from Ottawa, Ontario says, observation regarding audio editors. I heard Rogue Amoeba mention, I have their fission editor companion to, and find it useless <laughs> for fine editing. Copying from one file to another leaves a noticeable short silence. Oh, that's... <laughs> By the way, Mr. Preda just sent me a message on, 
on Discord, and he says, uh, "You guys are all losers for not for not having an answer to that." Um, I, uh, Jason, you had something to say. Sorry. Yeah, I'll I'll own this one. The only reason that I brought that app up is because it's very very good at simultaneously handling metadata, and if you zoom in and and read the manual, you can do incredibly precise edits. Yes, it can be a bit of a pain. It's mostly for chapter markup and for, you know, clipping the tails off of a podcast, putting up your art, appending metadata, and going. Okay, and Stephen Richards just said, uh, it, it should have said, as a companion to Audio Hijack. It's I'm, not a companion to Audio Hijack. It's an editor. Okay, I'm not. Uh, this might be referring to something a couple questions ago, and Stephen, I apologize. Um, okay, so uh, Michael J. from Michael J. Fox from New York City, our own Michael J. Fox. Uh, what app and application to use, Mac or PC, to upload photos with live updating capabilities? Thinking of using for a group in outdoor event. You know what I would do? It, I, Michael, if you have a way of responding to this, maybe in the chat, do you mean multiple people have to upload to a single spot or just you? Uh, he says, yes. Hey, the chat worked. How awesome is that? Um, is it like a ton of people or are they trusted people? Here we go. Looking for the answer. Yes, a ton of people. I don't know. I was going to say you could share one iCloud account and everybody's photos would automatically end up there, but you wouldn't want to do, you could make a, you could make a, an event iCloud. Is that something you could do maybe and ask people to change their phones or a, a question? But I have, iCloud has to be linked to a specific iOS user, right? So somebody's going to still have know. to deal so with So maybe like management. a Google, a, a Google cloud. Paul has his hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say, you took the words right out of my mouth, Chris, a Google shared album in Google Photos. It's almost instantaneous if you have it set up right. There you go, Michael. There's your answer. Google shared photos, shared album. Uh, and then somebody else, uh, Mr. Cochran is saying tagboard.com over in the chat. Okay, so Rich uh, Susan Gilpin says... What happened to Peter Himmel, Himmelman? Uh, there was a technical problem. I don't know all the details. Alex had to slip away during the first hour, came back and said, uh, something's going on. And so they're going to reschedule that. But they had some sort of a tech issue. And that's why you're subjected to watching me trying to fake my way through this. Um, doing Victoria, great, Chris. Victoria oh, Ray says- Best uh, office hours ever. Best hands. office hours ever. Okay, I'm returning my Focusrite solo because the preamp is underpowered. Suggestions on a unit that has decent preamps under $300. Well, good thing Alex isn't here because he's never paid under $300 for anything. Bill? Well, so you're saying it's underpowered. You do know that there are inline little preamps and things like that that you can put in front of the signal hitting it yep. to get it. Cloud lifter. I, yeah, we see all sorts of uh, circumstances here where people have just a tiny, tiny narrow range from not loud enough to too loud. And I just keep wanting to go, just put a pad in there and, and get the signal down into a level that the pot can handle. Um, I think most of those things, Bill, are uh, improper gain stage management. Mickey, what, what's your thought on that? With the people who have like fiddly, like, oh, too high, too low, too high, too low. Um, yeah, well, I, I would agree that it's probably um, a, a preamp that that isn't like, you know, it's it's a cheaper preamp. Like, and the the resolution on the, um, the, the, what do you call this? Um, the fader isn't great and it jumps around. So I had, I had to max mine out on my on my focus right. I had to put it all the way up to get to the right level. So it is weak. It's kind of weird. Well, interesting. So yeah, I I think I do think that a lot of issues come from just improper game gain stage management. And I have an idea in my head of how to animate that to teach that, but I don't have the time. Um so so Mickey, what would you recommend for a, a decent mic pre for under 300 bucks? 
under 300 decent doesn't really mix together um okay uh, but yeah i would try like as bill mentioned like the the fat head or the cloud lifter um if that would give enough gain depending of course on i what think a cloud lifter is like 100 bucks is that right i yeah I'm not 100 familiar. bucks yeah yeah so, so victoria like would... essentially what that would be is and and to be clear the cloud lifter primarily is used for um dynamic mics so you plug a dynamic mic into the cloud lifter what the cloud lifter has is some magic that takes the phantom power from your focus right. It then amplifies the low level signal into a higher signal, and then it hits the solo at a higher level. So normally, whereas normally you don't use phantom power on a dynamic mic, this allows you to kind of get the benefits. Of it. Did, am I saying that wrong? Uh, yeah, um, the, the cloud lifter, is, is the unit that is powered by Phantom. It doesn't Correct. pass on that's, the Phantom I think that's to, what I was trying to, say to, the, to the microphone. Although I think the, there's a version as well of the fat head that does pass Phantom over to the to the mic if the I mic needs Jeff, it. I uh, think Jeff yeah. Francis pointed that out. So yeah, you can think it, think times. of it, think of those, think of those boxes like pre preamps. Four minutes. Um, Four minutes. Two questions. Oh, thank you. Moving on. Okay, so I got to. As shuffle some questions over here boom 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 we don't get to talk about these long laura seal hello laura says um is there a list of approved ssds for the a10 mini couldn't find on black magic site no t5s in my town looking for alternatives oh jason Look at that, Jason yes, has his hand it's up. absolutely at blackmagicdesign.com slash support. It's absolutely there. And it, the fact that you know that it's a T5 and not a T7 means you found it and you can't find any of those on the list. I hate that too, but that the, the list is real. And yes, it is T5s and not T7s. What is, what um, is the difference? I, I, it sounds shocking to me that a slightly different drive is so much different do we know what the issue is do you really want to waste all the time i'll explain it to you no Long we'll do it another short, time they change they change the guts and it just doesn't work in the same way i'll buy you a beer sometime and you can tell me all about it uh moving on uh dorian robinson from bermuda says i'm using ndi tools and obs 24.0.6 on os 10 can i switch between different nbi sources ndi sources And tomorrow we will answer that question. Make sure you come back for another episode, exciting episode of Office Hours, same bat time, same bat channel. Education. Uh, we, have, we have no answer. Education I, tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow we will be talking about education for the teachers. Um, and uh, we'll do, do the same thing on oh. Saturday. What's that? Lorraine Robinson's question? I'm sorry, we do have an answer to that. Oh. What is your yes, answer? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, you switch NDI sources by um, by creating multiple sources and defining them. So in, in OBS, you create multiple sources of type NDI. And for each of those sources, you define the NDI source that you want to use, if that makes so sense. So essentially, you're making different scenes. This scene looks for this uh, NDI patch. This scene looks for a different You're creating NDI different NDI source instances, which you can then apply to one or more scenes. You know what's frightening to me, Colin? Is that a couple of months ago, I would have had no idea what you were talking about. And now I get it. <laughs> so what, what yes! you're basically doing, what you're basically doing is it, when I say an instance of an NDI source, you're creating a a, an object within uh, OBS that utilizes the NDI plugin to connect to a particular NDI source. That way you don't have to go and switch them outside of, of OBS. Okay, the yep. director in me says, Chris, now repeat what you just said and hit the music and roll out. See, uh, we, had the, we, we had the perfect, we had the perfect ending and then we had to have all the And details. then I screwed it up, I'm no, so sorry. No, no, screwed it up. It's just, there it is. And Chris, take it. Uh, 15 seconds. Tomorrow's all about education. Saturday's all about education. 
Uh, tell your teacher friends, and Sunday will be a relaxed day. Next week, we'll do it again. And Chris learns things every Goodbye, day. Goodbye, everybody. I'll let the music sting and it'll be loved. But for the record, I got out. I got out by nine. It's the music I don't have any control over. Come on, Nicky. Let it stay. Nailed it, Chris. You nailed it. It's noon here. Good night, everybody.